Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to look at an API called Oracleize. And I got this request from a comment here on the channel. So thank you for leaving comments and discussing with me in the comment section. I appreciate you leaving feedback and appreciate you leaving suggestions for future videos. So please do that in this video as well. If you want to see a video on the channel, uh, please leave it in the comments and I will address it if I find it interesting as well. Uh, as soon as I can. But as I said, today we're going to look at Oracleize. We're going to discuss what it is, uh, how it works, why we need it, and then how we can use it in our smart contract. First of all, what is it? Well, it's, it describes itself as a data carrier for decentralized apps. And if you followed my videos in the past, you know that we've talked about oracles and the need for oracles when developing smart contracts since smart contracts usually rely upon data from the real world we need some sort of service that can fetch this data into the smart contract from sources that we call oracles so an oracle when it comes to weather would be some sort of weather service i don't know weather.com yahoo weather that can bring us a trusted source of weather information and we can use that api and hook it into the Oracleize API that has then built a smart contract that we can easily that we can easily um, inherit from in our smart contract or import as a library in EOS, I think, and then use that weather API in order to have weather data in our smart contract. Because if we're going to develop uh, develop a, a smart contract around the weather, I don't know. What, what kind of dApp could you develop around weather? Well, I don't know. I thought for a while I didn't come up with any, any good, uh, good dApps to build on weather. Uh, but let's take another example. You could take uh, the example of building uh, a decentralized weather, um, weather prediction, forecast, whatever, and instead use APIs from example weather stations that will give you temperature and humidity and so on, and then you can build your predictions upon that in your smart contract maybe maybe it's a silly example but uh, let's use weather since it's an easy api to get another cool thing that you can use oracleize for is uh, to implement random functionality in your smart contract if you follow my smart contract videos in the past or taken our courses uh, you know that it's all it's impossible to uh, to do random numbers you can do sort of random numbers but they're not really random uh, and that's because uh, the nature of decentralized computing is that everyone has to find consensus and it's very difficult difficult to actually implement the random number if everyone has to come up with the same number when they execute the code. So what you can do with Oracle is, of course, you can have a, an, an external service that de delivers, the, delivers the pseudo random number. I'm not going to go into why we can't have totally random numbers in computing. Uh, that's a completely um, separate issue. But you can have an external service that delivers that number through an API and then you can connect to that through Oracleize and use it in your smart contract. In many situations, we actually do need random numbers in our contract. But so this is Oracleize and you can read more on Oracleize.it. And if you go to dev.oracleize.it. Oh, let's see. I need to um, make sure that you can see this. Uh, you can go to Oracleize.it. To read more about it and you can go to dev.oracleize.it if you're interested in developing with Oracleize. So I'm going to show you um, a simple uh, a simple example, well two examples if we find the time uh, to use Oracleize and how it's used. So we can start by going into the documentation. Well I had it here but uh, you can find it uh, by clicking here. API documentation and you can see here that it is uh, Available for both Ethereum, for Rootstock, for EOS, and for Corda. In this video, we're going to look at Ethereum. Uh, but it's great that it's also available for EOS. So this is uh, an example contract uh, where all we need to do in order to, to use Oracleize is to use the import statement here and import the actual Oracleize API contract from GitHub. And then uh, inherit from it by specifying that our contract is using Oracleize, uh, so we're inheriting from the using or Oracleize contract. And then we can do uh, this Oracleize query, where, where we query uh, URL in this case with JSON data, 
and then get the price data in this example from GDAX because they have a price API for Ethereum US dollar and then we can get the price and we can use that in our decentralized application and then when this is uh, finished it will uh, execute the callback function here and this is all magic that goes on in the um, in the Oracle Eyes contract so we don't have to we don't have to um, care about building our own callback and setting all of that up because it's already set up for us in the Oracle Eyes contract and that that's why this is a such a well uh, well used API because it has done all of that hard work for us okay so this is the example one of the examples that is given from Oracleize themselves, they have um, they have um, a list of examples here in their uh, documentation and in their web IDE and code samples. And this is one of the one of those. It gets the diesel price from a um, uh, U.S. government source, I think. So if we look at this source, you can open up this in a tab on your own. So this is a REST API where you get this XML file with a tree structure of XML tags. So they extract the diesel price from here by selecting um, here, the diesel price and diesel, they go down the tree and then they get the price from that. But I thought I would modify this slightly to create my own example uh, for two reasons. One, because it's interesting. And two, because this example did not actually work when I tried it. I don't know why I haven't looked into it but I wrote this and this is very similar. Uh, it has some similar, uh, all the similar comments and all the similar structure, but I have replaced the, uh, the Oracleize query here with, first of all, it's not a JSON source. Uh, sorry, it's not an XML source, it's a JSON source. And I use the um, Yahoo weather API to get the sunset in Hawaii, I think, the sunset time. So if we look at this, this source instead we can see that we get json response here and that the sunset is at 6 57 pm so you can uh, you can go into um, yes the yahoo uh, weather api and let's see here i just google that and then you can go here for example and you can uh, select one of the examples here I, I chose this sunset time in hawaii but you can also um, Create your own query here to get their um, to get their weather info um, and try that. But I got one of those examples, and then as you saw here, let's see, do I have this here still? We need to uh, navigate us through this uh, JSON object here, so we need to go inside of query and then results, channel, astronomy, and sunset. And that is what I have done here. So query, result, channel, astronomy, sunset. And um, different from the previous one is, of course, that this was an XML source. So I replace XML there by JSON here. And we deploy this just like any other contract. Uh, well, is to be noted here is that we have imported this uh, Oracleize API here. And the sunset contract is, um, is inheriting from the Oracleize contract. Th that contract name is using Oracleize, so it's like so it's easy to read. Sunset is using Oracleize, but it's an inherent uh, type thing. And once that we've gone through that, we can actually deploy it. Unfortunately, the Oracleize contract does not work with the uh, JavaScript VM, so we have to use the testnet. So it will take some extra time here to get going. But I'm going to uh, deploy this contract to the Incubate test network. And once that's done, we can, of course, uh, navigate into here and then hit update in order to run the update function, which will fetch this, uh, this data from Oracleize uh, through the Oracleize contract and then from the API. So let's hit confirm. And this will then set the sunset time in here through this callback. That's right here. And then we can use our getter function here, sunset time, which is automatically generated, of course, to get the sunset time whenever we want. And now when I have resized my face here, you can actually see the time 6.57 PM. 
And this is of course the same as we saw here in the Yahoo API, because that's where we get the data from 657 PM. And it's here in the callback function where you actually uh, can use the data. So the data comes here in the result uh, and you can use that however you like. I just set it as a state variable. So I have it in the contract and I can use it wherever I want. You should of course modify that to suit the needs of your contract. And I thought I would leave this video here. I said I was maybe going to go through a second example, but I had so much trouble with this um, first example that it took so much time for me to make this video. I decided to just uh, give you one example here today. But uh, <clears throat> I hope that you've learned how Oracle Eyes works, why we need it, and how you can implement it in your Solidity contract. Please leave a comment if you want to see me uh, use Oracle Eyes for something else, maybe for EOS. Or if you have any other suggestions for videos, I would love to hear them. And as always, don't forget to hit the like button if you like the video, the dislike button if you dislike the video, and also subscribe to the channel if you like my content. I really appreciate it. With that being said, I want to say thank you for watching the video, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.